Hi, boys and girls. Well, today we're going to learn more about levers. Levers are a really useful tool for opening and closing things, moving things from one place to another. Let's find out how levers are really helpful in our world. And this book is called Scoop, Seesaw, and Raise. A book about levers. Scoop, seesaw, and raise. I like this scoop. Scoop. That helped me read that word. And I see the sight word see here. And the other sight word saw. Put them together and I get seesaw. And then I've got raise. Hmm. Let's find out more about some levers. Scoop. Seesaw and raise. This is one of my favorite foods. I really hope there's ice cream at the end of this story. Oh, good. A table of contents. Now I know I'm going to get some information. Painting a garage is hard, hot, sweaty work. Hmm. How is this about levers? If I'm painting. Oh, I see. It's time for a break. A metal opener pops off the top of a soda cap. Ah, did you know that all day you've been working with simple machines called levers? So when you're opening up your soda can, that's a lever right on the top. It helps perform a task. It helps you open the can of soda. What is a lever? A simple machine is any tool or device that helps us work. A simple machine does not always have an engine or buttons or make loud noises. A lever is a simple machine made of a stiff bar that rests on a fulcrum. The bar is the part of the lever that moves up or down. The fulcrum does not move. This machine is so simple that many times we use a lever without even knowing it. When you opened the soda pop can, you used a lever. So the part that doesn't move, the part that stays still, the fulcrum. And this part, the part that moves, is called the bar. How a lever works. When you use a screwdriver to open a can of paint, you are using another lever. The long metal body of the screwdriver is the bar. The part of the screwdriver that rests against the can and does not move is the fulcrum. Push down on the handle of the screwdriver and the other end moves up. Snap! The lid pops open. A seesaw is a lever. Watch children play on a seesaw or teeter-totter. When a child sits down on one seat of the seesaw, she is using a force or effort. The seesaw gives her extra force to lift the friend at the other end. Without the lever's special help, she could not lift her friend up by herself. Yeah, so she couldn't pick up this guy. But using the bar and the fulcrum to make a lever, which then we call a seesaw, not a problem. You can apply a force by pushing up with your legs, which lifts the other end. How low is the other end too? Scoop. An ice cream scoop works the same way. Effort or force is applied to one end of the scoop by your hand. You push it. The other end lifts a delicious scoop of ice cream. Boy, I'm getting really hungry now. You guys better be bringing in some ice cream. The fulcrum is the middle of the ice cream scoop, where your fingers grip the handle. 
Another lever on the playground is a dipper or scoop. One end of the metal bar is pulled down. The other end scoops up the sand or dirt. The digger is a first class lever, like a seesaw. Oh, so we've got a lever to help us move that. And we know this edge is called a wedge because it digs in. And the edge of the scoop is called a wedge because it digs in. So we've got wedges attached to levers. Cool. A bottle opener. The bottle opener works like another type of lever. This time the fulcrum is not in the middle of the bar. The fulcrum is at the end. So you put it on, then you pull up, and then it pops off. So the fulcrum is the part right there where it doesn't move. As you lift one end of the opener, the fulcrum end does not move. It presses against the top of the bottle cap. The fulcrum end gives you steady support as you pry up the edge of the cap. So a bottle opener is a lever. Cool. So we know that an ice cream scoop is a lever. We know that a teeter-totter or seesaw is a lever. We know that um, the screwdriver, when I'm trying to open a paint can, is a lever. We know the pop tab on the top of a soda can is a lever. And we know that the scooping, digging um, tool at the playground is also a lever. There's a lot of levers around. Brooms and brushes. Wait a minute. These are levers too? A broom is a third kind of lever. The broom sweeps back and forth. Its bristles collect dirt and dust. The broom's fulcrum is near the top where your hand grips the broomstick. The effort made in the middle where your other hand moves the stick back and forth. The load is the other end where the bristles sweep the dirt. This kind of lever is called a third class lever. Huh, but it's still a lever. Interesting. Paint brushes are also a third class lever. They sweep up and down against the wall. Their soft bristles splash paint against the flat surface. Brushes and brooms are simple machines that help us clean and make things look brand new. So now we know brooms and brushes are levers. I wonder if that means the brush that I use to brush my hair. I wonder if that is a kind of lever. Yeah, it's a third class lever. Oh, check that out. First, second, and third class levers. Here's the first, here's the second, Here's the third. Every day we use all three kinds of levers to help us work. The class of lever simply tells us where the fulcrum rests and where the effort is applied. So we know that the screwdriver, the soda pop tab, all oh, scales when I'm weighing something. Seesaws and ice cream scoops, those are first class levers. Then we have the bottle opener, a wheelbarrow, Wow. And we have a garlic press. We have a nutcracker. And we have nail trimmers. Those are second class levers. Then we have third class levers of brooms. Oh, snow shovels. Hammers and paintbrushes. Those are all third class levers. But guess what? They're all levers. Cool. That means there must be a lot of levers around my house that I wasn't aware of. Fun levers. Not all levers help us work. Some levers, like these hockey sticks, help us play. The hockey sticks help move the hockey puck across the ice. How do you use levers to work and play? Hmm. And we know that he's applying a force. He's applying a pushing force when he uses that hockey stick to move the hockey puck. And we know that 
what's going to stop that? Yep, you're right. Friction. Friction is going to slow it down and then stop it if the goalie doesn't stop it first. Or maybe he'll get a goal and he'll go into the net and the net will be the one to stop it. My goodness, there's just forces and simple machines everywhere. It's amazing. All right, team. Scroll on down and find out what your scientific assignment is for today.